In this video, I'll show you how you can add narration to your quiz question feedback. I've received this question a number of times, and while I've answered it individually, I decided that it might be best to do a little recording of uh, my workaround for this particular question so that uh, you guys can, can use this in your own e-learning projects. Uh, this question that's come up is, uh, of course, we all know that we can add text-to-speech narration to any of our quiz question slides, but the question is, can we add text-to-speech narration to all of our feedback captions that appear on our quiz question slides? Now, there's no default function for doing this, but I've come up with a workaround that seems to work reasonably well. There are a couple of caveats to it, and I would mention those as we go through this, but this is a fairly easy process, so I'll show you what, what we need to do. First of all, we have, of course, our standard slide here. There's nothing special about this. I simply have a single question, single answer with three different distractors. I have a correct caption. I've decided to give people three tries, so I'm giving them three different feedback options. And of course, uh, I'm requiring that they must answer the question before continuing, so I have a caption for that as well. Now, to generate the text-to-speech narration for these five additional objects that will appear on a quiz question slide, I've created five additional blank slides. And in fact, I'm not going to need those visible in output, so I'm going to select all of them and right-click and hide those slides. I've gone ahead and actually input uh, the, the captions that, you, that do appear on the screen to ultimately become my text-to-speech information for the, uh, the generating of those audio files. So let's go ahead and do that. You can access that from the audio drop-down menu and select speech management. Alternatively, you can press Shift Alt S and that will bring that up. And once you have that window open, you can of course edit any of the text to make sure that it matches what you need it to say and make sure that it's both grammatically and spelled correctly and all that stuff. So I'm gonna hit generate audio and that's gonna generate all of my text to audio files. Now, if you take a look in the library, you can see they've all been placed there. In fact, there's a total of six files. One audio file for the slide narration for the quiz question itself and the five additional captions. So let's close the speech management window and return to the slide, uh, the question slide. Now, each of these captions, if I select, for example, the correct caption, I can go to the properties inspector and underneath the Options tab, there's a button to add audio. And of course, I can select that, and that's gonna bring up Object Audio. I can go to the library, and then what I can do is I can preview these audio files one by one until I find the correct one that I need. Let's uh, take a look here. Who was elected Prime Minister of Canada in 20... So that's the question slide itself. Let's try the next item. Correct. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. So there's our correct caption. I'm gonna click on OK, and then I'll hit Save. Now it's prompting me, and you may see this from time to time when you're doing this. Do you want to extend the display time to 3.4 seconds to match the new audio? In other words, the audio for the caption is longer than the slide audio. So we need to make the slide a little bit longer to accommodate that. So the answer when you see this should always be yes. And I can now close that window. And of course the correct caption now has audio associated with it. There's actually an easier way to assign the audio to the remaining captions. And I'll show you that now. If you click on your library tab or your library panel, you'll see all of the items uh, under audio here. So we have our, our first example here. That's the correct caption, but you can actually play any of these from the library and uh, preview them. Incorrect. Try again. So there's the incorrect try again. Rather than selecting the incorrect try again caption, 
and clicking on the properties inspector and then clicking on options and then clicking on the add audio button, I can actually just drag the audio from my library right onto this object and then it's done. I do the same thing for the remaining items as well. Incorrect. Try to recall what you learned in the previous lesson. Okay, so there's the third, or sorry, the second incorrect caption. Again, I'm getting that message to extend the playtime, no problem. And let's try this one here. Incorrect. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. So again, I can drag that right over to the third incorrect caption. And my guess is that this one is the, uh, you must answer the question before continuing. You must answer the question before continuing. Sure enough, it is. And we can drag that over to that caption as well. So everything's set up to work properly. And this should be no problem for you in the future. Um, the thing is, is that if you decide to change one of these captions, like I said before, you'll need to re-record uh, those text-to-speech items and then drag them, drag the new version of the file over to the caption. Unlike slide audio, it isn't going to automatically update itself when you, uh, when you regenerate those audio files. The other thing is that because these are not associated with the slide, but instead the captions, or in this case, the objects that are on screen, there is no association with closed captioning because closed captioning occurs on the slide level. The good news, of course, is that you are generating audio for a text caption. So while there's no closed captioning at the bottom of your screen, at least persons who prefer closed captioning or require closed captioning will still have text displayed on screen. So it's still somewhat accessible. The last uh, little warning I want to give you about this particular workaround is that this works really great when your slide audio is relatively short, like the question slide that I have here, who was elected Prime Minister of Canada in 2015. If you have longer narration at the, sli at the slide level itself, you run the risk of a user selecting the correct answer and hitting submit before the slide audio is, com is complete. What's going to happen in that case is that the user will not only hear the remainder of the slide audio, but they'll hear the feedback captioning as well. And it's going to sound like people talking over one another. Uh, it'll be very difficult for them to hear what's being said. So I'd recommend keep the slide level audio very short, very simple questions only, and, uh, and, and make sure that, of course, uh, when you update any uh, of your audios, audio uh, files to just make sure that you drag them back over from the library. Uh, let's give a preview here and so you can see what this is like. Let's do this in browser. Who was elected Prime Minister of Canada in 2015? So again, I've, I'm waiting for that. That's no problem. It's not a, a long slide. So let's select a wrong answer first. Incorrect. Try again. So that wasn't right. So let's try Thomas Mulcair. Incorrect. Try to recall what you learned in the previous lesson. And we'll get it right this time. Correct. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. So it works pretty much as expected. But like I said, if you were to restart this and quickly Who was answer elected the question, Prime Minister of correct. Canada in 2015. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. So you can see how that could be confusing for your users. So uh, that's the only caveat really with this that's really uh, difficult to deal with is that you're going to have the possibility of hearing two audio files played at the same time. Hopefully this workaround does work for you. If you guys are enjoying the videos that I'm producing for you, I do encourage you to subscribe to my channel. That way you'll hear about the new videos as they come out. Also, if this video was useful or helpful for you, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.